I'm going to show you how to set the crossover on your amplifier with nothing but a very basic digital multimeter. We're going to start off by sitting down and doing the math so you understand the mathematics behind the crossover points. Then we're going to pop into the garage and we're going to use a digital signal processor to verify that our math works as intended. Finally, we're going to actually pull a real amplifier and set those crossover points using this bad boy right here. And remember, if you like dogs, stick around to the end. My name is Justin, and I build my own speakers. Let's imagine that you wanted to set your crossover at 80 hertz. You would run an 80 hertz test tone through your amplifier, unhook your speaker, and attach the leads to your digital multimeter to the speaker output to the amplifier, and then measure the voltage. So let's say, for example, your voltage was uh, 20 volts, and that's your unfiltered voltage without any crossover activated. What you basically will then do is calculate a voltage factor, which I've done here for you, and you can just take a screenshot of this and use it for your own purposes. And you multiply that voltage factor by the unfiltered voltage. So the voltage factor multiplied by the unfiltered voltage. So in this example, 20 volts multiplied by 0.708 gives us 14.16 volts. Meaning that if you run that 80 hertz test tone through your, um, through your amplifier and then uh, test it with the, the leads from the multimeter, then at 80 hertz, you're going to be down from 20 volts to 14.16 volts. With a 12 decibel per octave slope, you'll have a 10.2 volts. So it's a voltage vector of half. So 20 times 0.5 is 10.2. With an 18 decibels per octave slope, you're going to multiply 20 times 0.355, which gives us a 7.1 filtered voltage. And then finally, a 24 decibel per octave slope. 20 multiplied by 0.251 gives us a 5 volt uh, output at the speaker terminals. So now what we're going to do is show you this using a digital signal processor and an amplifier. Okay, so here we have our multimeter and we've got 13.95 volts and we have a crossover set at 5000 hertz, 6 decibels per octave. What we're going to do now is we're going to go in and we're going to change this we're going to do a little bit of math first, and we're going to multiply our voltage, 13.95, multiply by the factor that I calculated earlier, and that factor was 0 0.708, 0 0.707 by some people's standards, but we'll do 0 0.708. We're going to get a target voltage of 9.8. 8766 or 9.88. So our target voltage is 9.88. And what we'll do now is go back into the DSP software. We're going to take that 5000 Hertz crossover and we're going to change it to 50 because I'm doing a 50 Hertz test tone. And we hit done and we hit OK and we now have a 50 Hertz six decibels per octave crossover and you see that the multimeter has changed to 9.86 so we're really close to our predicted cutoff point. Um, next what we're going to do is go back to the calculator and go back to our starting voltage of 13.95 and multiply that by our next factor, the factor we need for, uh, well divided by two really, uh, our next factor 0.501 to see where our next voltage should be and that's 6.988 and some change we're going to call that 6.99 so we're going to drop from almost 14 volts to almost 7 volts so let's go back to the digital signal processor and let's change the crossover slope well before we do that let's take a look at the EQ right here because it shows the output and you can see that at 50 hertz, which is our crossover frequency we're working from, we're down by 3 decibels. Back to the output from the crossover. 
6 decibels, let's go with 12 decibels per octave. We do 12 decibels per octave and our output on our digital multimeter is 6.95, which was very close to what we originally had estimated it should be. Okay, back to the calculator. Our starting voltage of 13. Point, was it 9.4 or 9.5? It really doesn't matter. We get off into the decimals. Multiply it by our factor of point. Three five seven, and we get four point nine eight volts. So now let's go back into our digital signal processor, and let's go back here and let's change this twelve decibel per octave to an eighteen decibel per octave, um, and we see that the voltage dropped to 4.916. So that got us pretty close to what we're looking for. Not the most exact thing here. Uh, I don't know why that is, but it just simply is. Looking at the EQ, we see that they've plotted an even steeper uh, cutoff point for the crossover. Going back to the output, we're gonna try an, a 24 decibel per octave slope. And when we do that, we get 3.467 volts, 3.47 maybe, roughly, 3.467, it rounds to 3.47, so we got 3.47 volts. Let's check that with the calculator, and let's go to our original starting voltage that we had before we did anything, which was 13.94 volts, and multiply that by roughly 0.25, 0.251, and that gives us 3.49 volts, 3.5 volts, 3.49, which is really close to our 3.46 that we have here, within some rounding error of, uh, of the correct numbers. And there we go. That's how we can verify the math that I did earlier on the spreadsheet. And now we know for sure what our voltage is going to be when we set up our crossovers have here in front of you is the typical crossover setup for a typical four channel amplifier with crossovers. This particular crossover right here has the ability to go full range, high pass, or band pass. If you were going to use subwoofers, you'd activate the band pass section. If you were going to make this as a mid bass amplifier, you'd activate the band pass section. If you wanted this to run mids and highs, you could activate the high pass section. This amplifier also has the, the multiplier buttons right here. So if you press it in, pressed in is a 10 times multiplier. So if you press it in, it goes from uh, 500 to 5,000 hertz. With it pressed out, it goes from 500 hertz down to 50 hertz. Likewise, um, with the high pass filter, it's a 20 to 400 hertz. So if you were using this to run um, a mid-range and a tweeter off of, say, a component set, you would leave it pressed out and you do a 20 to 400 hertz filter. If you wanted to do a 200 to 4000, if you were perhaps running a tweeter off this channel, these channels, uh, you would press it in. And what we're going to do today is we're going to see how to use the voltage that I've been talking about in the video so far in order to set your crossover. Specifically, we're going to be looking at setting a low pass filter. For this particular amplifier, you have to put it on the bandpass filter. And what I want to point out before I do anything with these knobs is that it came from the factory just like this, with the low pass filter turned all the way to 50 hertz. So watch what happens when I activate bandpass mode on our digital multimeter. The digital multimeter cuts it down to 1.686 volts. Why? Why? Because this crossover right now is set, according to the dial at the very least, at 50 hertz. And what I want to point out is even though it's set to 50 hertz, the, uh, the slot for the screwdriver is not pointing at the 50. That's an important thing to kind of remember and why it's important to pull out a multimeter. Now, what I've done with the multimeter is I've just simply put the test leads into the speaker outputs of the amplifier. No speaker is hooked up. Um, not running any anything live, not making any sound. You wouldn't want to do this with speakers hooked up because that's a great way to hurt your ears and blow speakers and generally make a very bad day. So now what we're going to do is we're simply going to take this dial and we're going to turn it to the right 
until we get our target voltage. And so our target voltage is going to be the 10 some odd volts we had when we started multiplied by 0.251. And that should give me, let me double check on my calculator, Two point five nine volts. So we want this thing to read two point five nine volts. Now what you're going to notice is that every sixteen seconds, the um, the signal cuts out, and so there goes the signal. Let's look for it to turn back on, and we're at two point two two volts. Now we're going to knock it one more little tick. Um, it's in these little bitty. Um, you can feel there's some um, some friction here, like they're notches. So you can kind of feel it click over one. So I'm going to click over one more, and. We're at 2.88. We want to be at 2.59. So we're going to drop it back a one. And that gives us a 2.65. So we can't seem to get it exactly at 2.59 because it just won't go there. But that's really close. And it's a whole lot more close than eyeballing it. Because if I were eyeballing it, I would say that right now we're probably around 250 or 300 hertz because our slot is all the way straight up and down. You can't use the, oh, hey, the slot is all the way straight up and down as an indicator. That slot is not an indicator dial. It's simply a place to put the screwdriver. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this thing all the way to the right, and I'm going to show you what happens to our voltage. So we're going to go as far to the right as it'll go. As you notice, it goes past the 500 mark. So it's pointing at the 50 at this point, but it's all the way at 500. And we're at 10.23 volts, volts, which is actually a little bit less than what we were at before. Uh, if you remember where we were when we started the video, we were at 2.3. And this is the thing you've got to remember. The voltage starts to taper off long before the crossover starts to do anything. The voltage will taper off a couple of octaves above. That's the idea behind the, this filter. It's not a wall. It's a gradual filter. So what we're going to do now is take this dial and we're going to reverse it. And we're going to reverse it till we get to our 2.59 that we're looking for. Oh, hey, nailed it that time. That's really peculiar how I nailed it that time. So here we are right exactly at the 2.59 that we're looking for. So there you go. That's how you set up a crossover. No matter if you're doing a 6, 12, 18, or 24 decibel slope, the concept is basically the same. All you need is a multimeter. This multimeter was not an expensive multimeter. It was probably a $25 to $40 multimeter on Amazon. It wasn't a Janky Harbor Freight one, but it might not be any better than a Janky Harbor Freight one. It's definitely not a fancy expensive fluke. Don't think you have to go buy a $100 multimeter in order to perform this test. So there we go. That is how you set up the game, set up the low-pass crossover on uh, your amplifier with nothing but a digital multimeter. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Sit, sit, catch. Good dog.